Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Tarshis, Editorial Director of StoryWorks Junior, and I want to welcome you to a video read aloud of my article, Mountain of Fire. It's about the eruption of Mount St. Helens in Washington State in 1980. It was the most deadly volcanic eruption in American history. I worked so hard on this article. I read many books, scoured many articles, watched videos, studied maps, and I was so happy to bring the finished article into the very first issue of StoryWorks Junior. And I'm extremely excited to be able to read it to you out loud right now. So I hope you enjoy this experience, and I assure you, you will get out safely. So here we go. Mountain of Fire. Eric Smith, 10, had no idea that the world around him was about to explode. It was May 18, 1980. Eric was with his dad, Buzz, and his seven-year-old brother, Adam. They were camping in a forest near Mount St. Helens. It is one of the tallest mountains in Washington state. The mountain towered over them. Its peaks sparkled with snow. The day before, the Smiths had hiked the forest trails. At night, they all snuggled up in their tent. They slept under a sky lit up with stars. Now they were wide awake. It was a quiet morning and the boys happily talked about their plan for the day. Their dad cooked breakfast on the camp stove. The only sound was the sizzle of bacon and eggs. All around them, the woods were as quiet as a whisper. But all was not peaceful around Mount St. Helens that day. That's because this mountain was not just a mountain. It was a volcano and no one knew that it was about to erupt. The Smiths had just finished their breakfast when a noise shattered the quiet. Crack, crack, crack. At first, Eric thought it was a hunter's gun. Then he saw a huge gray cloud above. Strange rocks fell from the sky. The rocks bounced off the Smiths' heads. They felt light, like hot ping pong balls. Then there was a loud roar. Eric stared in shock as 500-year-old trees fell around them. The trees fell quickly, as though they were skinny twigs. Eric's dad grabbed his children. They were able to take shelter under the trunk of a fallen tree. The ground shook as the air became searing hot, like a huge dragon was breathing fire. Make it stop, Eric's mind screamed. Make it stop. But the terror was just starting. About 1,500 of Earth's volcanoes are active. What this means is that they have the power to erupt. Volcanoes that are unlikely to erupt are called extinct. Some active volcanoes look dangerous. Hawaii's Kilauea volcano, for example, oozes lava. Other active volcanoes are famous for their past eruptions. Mount Vesuvius in Italy erupted almost 2,000 years ago. That eruption buried the city of Pompeii. But most active volcanoes look like regular mountains. They sit silently as people ski their slopes or climb their cliffs. Big eruptions like the one at Vesuvius happen only once a decade or so. When they do happen though, they are often disastrous. They can cause death and destruction. Here in the United States, there are 169 active volcanoes. Most are in Hawaii and Alaska but 13 of the volcanoes are in a mountain range called the Cascades. This range zigzags up from California through Oregon and Washington and up into Southern Canada. Mount St. Helens is in this mountain range. In the past few thousand years, it has erupted many times, but in the late 1850s, Mount St. Helens went quiet. It stayed quiet for more than a hundred years. As time passed, most people seemed to forget that Mount St. Helens was a volcano. Many built houses on the mountain, including the Smiths. Eric and Adam grew up hiking in the area's thick forests. They boated on Spirit Lake, a beautiful lake at the base of the mountain. About two months before the Smiths' camping trip, Mount St. Helens started to wake up. Earthquakes rumbled below the mountain. Pilots flying overhead spotted smoke rising from the mountain's peak but nobody was sure what would happen. Volcanoes are unpredictable. Some erupt with little warning. 
Others rumble and then go quiet for centuries. Police told people living near the mountain to leave their homes and find a safe place to stay. Soon the mountain quieted down. Many believed that the worst was over. Some hikers and campers returned to the nearby woods. Eric's dad decided it would be safe to take the boys on a camping trip. He chose an area 11 miles from the mountain. He didn't believe that Mount St. Helens could be dangerous. He was wrong. It was 8.32 a.m. on that Sunday morning when the Smiths heard that terrifying crack, crack, crack. It was the sound of the mountain splitting open. The roar was from ash, melted rock, and ice being blasted into the sky. The strange light rocks that fell on their heads were hardened lava, known as pumice. A blizzard of hot ash followed. We've got to get out of here, Eric's dad cried. They began a difficult march out of the forest. They walked for miles over fallen trees and piles of debris. They were covered in ash. They looked like ghosts floating through a ruined land. The ash and mud were very deep. In some places, they sank up to their knees. At times, the ground burned their feet. Eric was terrified. He didn't know what had happened to his mom and sister. They hadn't come on the camping trip. Were they still safe at home? Eric was also very thirsty. He, his brother, and their dad had no water. The area's sparkling streams had turned into dirty soups of ash and mud. Finally, Eric's dad saw water seeping up from the ground. He was able to collect about two cups of it. It was warm and dirty, but Eric gulped it down. They'd been hiking for almost 12 hours when they heard helicopters. Rescuers had been searching for survivors. Now they had found three, the tired and lucky Smiths. The helicopter brought them to safety. They met up with Eric's mom and sister. They learned that their house was gone. It had been carried away by a landslide. 57 people were killed in the eruption. Nearly 230 square miles of wilderness was destroyed. The first months after the disaster were very hard for the Smiths. Eric and Adam were afraid to play outside. They missed their home, but soon they started to recover. The Smiths built a new house farther from the mountain. Over time, their fear turned to thankfulness. They had survived the fury of Mount St. Helens. I hope you enjoyed this video read aloud. By the way, my dog was with me the entire time that I was reading, and he was completely fascinated. I really look forward to being a part of your classroom. I hope you love StoryWorks Junior, <laughs> and I hope you have a great day. <laughs>